Hey, my name's Inter, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, then don't forget to subscribe for all my content coming soon. Today, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about playing predecessor to a beginner and intermediate level. This won't be a super advanced guide, but more so an introduction to get you familiar with the map, roles, key objectives, general gameplay, and stuff like that. With that said, these are the five sections I'll be covering in the video. Introduction, map and roles overview, roles in depth, the jungle and objectives, and finally, item system and general build rules. So as a short and sweet introduction, Predecessor is a MOBA where two teams of five players fill different roles and compete against their opponents in those respective roles. Killing minions and jungle camps to gain experience to level up, gaining access to new and more powerful abilities, and earning gold to purchase items that augment your stats and gain new effects. Eventually, the match transitions to a team fighting phase where all five players fight as a team instead of in their selected roles to take down enemy towers, inhibitors, and eventually the enemy core, which wins the game for your team. So that's the basics. The most important thing to learn after that is the map layout and the roles you will fill in a given match. You don't want to be that guy who says he can't play the role he's assigned and leaves or feeds, so learning each role to at least a basic level in terms of what to do and what characters work there is essential given you don't always get your preferred role when you queue up. But before we get into roles, I wanted to cover the basics of the predecessor map since the roles are somewhat defined off of the structure of the map. So this is the pred map. At a high level, it's a three lane map with a jungle area in between with corridors that connect each of the three lanes. We'll go more into the specifics of what's housed in the jungle in a later section, but for now, just think of it as the connecting part between the lanes. Each lane is symmetrical for each team and consists of a central area where most of the fighting goes down. This area then leads into each team's portion of the lane where there are two towers in each lane with an inhibitor behind that. Taking down enemy towers and protecting your own is key to winning the match overall as it allows you to push your minions forward into the enemy's base at which point you can attack their core and win the game. The structure of this map is loosely what defines each of the five roles in Predecessor. The carry, support, mid, solo and jungler. This guide will just contain a brief overview of each role, characters that work there and their general game plan. If you're interested in more in-depth role guides then do let me know. So kicking it off central, we have the mid laner. Covering the mid lane, this player is usually a high burst damage mage or assassin with strong wave clear and the ability to roam the map, since due to their central location they will often be involved in a lot of fights in the early to mid game while they can easily rotate to certain areas of the jungle or the two side lanes quicker than other roles. The mid laner's job is to farm the mid lane minions and gain map control of the local area during the laning phase. When team fights roll around, the mid is often the huge area of effect nuke dropper for the team, but can also be a bit more single target focused by assassinating key targets. It depends on your preferred playstyle, but mid laner will almost always be putting out big damage for the team. Some good sample heroes to get started in mid are Gideon, Howitzer and Countess. Moving on to solo lane, this role covers the side lane with the green buff closest to all prime. Look for these two things, not for right or left lane, since this changes depending on if you're dawn or dusk side. If you look for the lane with the green buff on the side instead, you can't go wrong. Solo lane is a quite diverse role in terms of playstyles, but it's mostly populated by tank or bruiser frontliners that dive into the enemy team to cause havoc in melee range, while often absorbing hits and taking attention away from their other teammates. Solo laners will farm the minions in their lane while contesting the green buff on the side, and occasionally roaming into the nearby jungle if needed to make plays. As you may have gathered from the name, you are often left alone in solo lane versus your opponent in a 1v1 for most of the laning phase. There will of course be rotations and ganks from junglers or others, but you will mostly be 1v1 in this role, after which you transition to the team fights where you dive the enemy backline and cause as much chaos as possible while distracting, crowd controlling and sometimes outright killing enemy damage dealers. Some good sample heroes for solo lane are Feng Mao, Crunch, Severog and Steel. So that's two lanes covered, let's move on to the final lane which is Duo. This one is identified by having gold buff on the side and being adjacent to Fangtooth, as opposed to solo lane having green buff and being adjacent to all prime. The Duo lane, as you may have guessed, has two occupants. The first is the carry who takes care of last hitting the minions in the lane and dealing high single target damage with basic attacks. Utilising high attack speed and crit chance to shred single enemies into dust while often struggling with area of effect damage in comparison to the other main damage dealer of the team in the mid, who often spend 
specializes in AoE damage. Carry players will be weaker early on in the laning phase, but monstrously strong in the late game, where in team fights their damage output is often unrivaled due to their strong use of carry items and basic attacks that don't have a cooldown like abilities do for the mid laner. They can be a constant source of very strong damage in those late game team fights without waiting for cooldowns, but do have the trade off of being lower mobility and vulnerable in the early game. Some good carry heroes to try are Drongo, Murdoch, and Sparrow. The other half of the duo lane is the support, who are the protectors of the team. They are paired with the carry for the early and mid game in the duo lane to protect them and help them through their weaker early stages to get them to that late game by offering protective crowd control, shields and healing. Supports will spend a good amount of time in duo lane avoiding last hits which are given to the carry for their gold and keeping them alive and healthy, but supports will also roam where needed like to mid lane or even to solo lane as their skill set is valuable to all players on the team, not just the carry. In team fights, the support is often looking to land crowd controls on key enemy targets such as enemies diving onto their carry and mid to keep them from taking down their team. Some supports will also employ shields or healing to achieve this goal as well. Some good supports to try are Muriel, Narbash and Steel. So that's all three lanes covered, as you may have guessed by now, the final player of the five is the jungler who roams the jungle area between the lanes, gaining their XP and gold from the monsters located there instead of lane minions like everyone else. More on the specifics of the jungle area and what's located there in a second, but the jungler will balance farming these camps with ganking their lanes to secure kills and offensive or defensive pressure for their teammates in those lanes to gain an advantage. Gank too much and you will fall behind in XP and gold, farm too much and you will leave your allies to fester as the enemy jungle attacks them relentlessly. To be a good jungler, you must find a balance between these two core pillars of the jungle role. Some successful junglers to try out are Crunch, Grux, Chimera and Kalari. Alright, so with the map overview and roles covered, it's time to dive into the elusive jungle area and the monsters located there. The jungle consists of three main categories of monsters, buff camps, farm camps and objectives. Buff camps are ones that give the killer some kind of bonus effect for clearing them. In Predecessor, there are currently five different types of buff camps. The red and blue buffs are located within the jungle itself and are taken by the jungler. Red gives bonus damage over time and a slow on basic attacks, while blue gives mana regeneration, ability haste, shortening your cooldowns, as well as bonus damage to jungle monsters to help you clear them out. It's important as a jungler to take these as soon as you can after they spawn since the benefits they give are crucial and you don't want to risk the enemy jungler or anyone else for that matter stealing them from you. The other two main buff camps are green and gold which I mentioned briefly in the rolls section. Green buff is on the side of solo lane and provides XP and gold as well as a burst heal and mana restoration on kill. Great for keeping solo lane as topped up in those long 1v1 fights that happen there. Gold buff is on the side of duo lane and provides a large bulk sum of gold upon killing it, great for helping those carries get their all important items online a little bit faster. These will be heavily contested since there is only one of them and both teams will fight over it, so expect resistance when taking these but know that they are important to take if you can. And the final buff camps are the river buffs. These critters are very easy to kill and are located on the sides of mid lane, one on each side. The buffs these offer change each time between four options, attack speed, a health shield, movement speed buff and extra ability damage. All four of them also give mana restoration on kill. These buffs are often taken by the mid laner for that mana regen between minion waves, but junglers sometimes take these as well, especially the movement or attack speed ones can be much more useful on a jungler than on a mid laner. So that's buffs. What's the rest of this stuff in the jungle? Well, the rest of the standard camps are just farm camps. These simply give XP and gold to the killer with no extra benefit and are taken by the jungler to get their levels and items in the same way laners do from minions. There are two farm camps on each side of the jungle for both teams. And finally we have the two or three I guess boss monsters or objectives of the jungle. The first one is Fangtooth. Located on the duo side, this monster usually requires two or three players to take it down but can be soloed in certain circumstances and will provide a different buff each time it is taken by your team. Your first Fangtooth kill grants increased duration on jungle buffs, second kill grants bonus out of combat movement speed and every kill from then on grants a stacking 6% increase to your power and protections up to 24% after 4 more kills. These affect the whole team regardless of who on the team actually kills Fangtooth. You can be chilling in solo lane on the other side of the map and still get these benefits, for example if your duo lane kills Fangtooth. On the other side of the map in a similar location we have Mini Prime and Orb Prime. 
For the first 20 minutes of the game, Mini Prime occupies this area and grants only the player who killed it increased damage and an aura that increases the damage of minions around you to allow for easier pushing of lanes and tower destruction. This one is of similar strength to Fangtooth and is definitely soloable in the right circumstances, but is more often taken by both the jungler and the solo laner combined, maybe even with help from the mid if necessary. For the first 20 minutes, the duo lane likely aren't rotating across the whole map to secure this, especially the ADC. Their job is more focused on Fangtooth. After 20 minutes, Mini Prime is replaced with Orb Prime, who is the biggest, baddest monster on the map. He is not soloable, don't even try it. This guy will require most, if not all, of your team to group up in order to take him down, but if you manage to do so, he gives a powerful buff of increased damage and out of combat regeneration of mana and health to your entire team. This is one of the main ways to actually finish a game or get an advantage if you're winning, or a way to come back into things if you're losing, since that extra damage goes a long way in team fights, as does the regen for healing in between fights and sieging enemy towers. But that's everything you need to know to navigate and exploit Predecessor's map. Let's finish this guide off with an overview of the item system, how it works and what general stats you're looking for as each roll. So after pressing G in game you'll open the store where you can purchase items to make your hero stronger. Picking good items and ones that fit your hero and role's playstyle is essential and will give you a big advantage over someone who doesn't know how to build properly and is picking random items. This comes with experience really and if you want a more in depth build guide then do let me know but I will cover the whole system and how it generally works here and what stats are good for each roll. It's worth noting that the auto buy feature will be on by default when you first start playing Predecessor. I recommend leaving this on for a few games while you learn the rest of the game in terms of how to actually play and the mechanics and grasp a few of your favourite characters abilities. After a few games though I would turn this off as the builds it gives you won't be optimal and you'll improve much faster as a player by knowing what to build and why which comes with experience. So the first thing you'll need to buy in every game is your crest. I say buy but these are free from the start and come in several different variants which loosely correspond to the 5 rolls. There are mage crests that are best on mid laners, fighter crests that are best on solo laners, rogue crests which are best on junglers, maxman crests which are best on carries, and support crests which are best on supports. Though it is worth noting these can cross over roles, so for example a solo laner might sometimes want a rogue crest. After selecting your crest, you will be assigned an upgrade quest, which requires you to fulfil a certain condition such as dealing damage near other allies for supports, or receiving damage and killing enemies for the frontline crest, etc. On completion of your quest, you gain access to three unique crest upgrades that you can choose one of. These depend on which base crest you chose and will all have an active ability that you can use by pressing 2 in game which will use that effect and put it on a cooldown. So for example the Razorback crest upgrade reflects 50% of all damage you take back to the attacker for 4 seconds when activated and has a 90 second cooldown. Each crest has 3 of these upgrades that you can pick from and they all do different things, so have a play around with them and see what you like, but don't forget to actually press 2 and use the effects as they can be quite powerful and are almost like having an extra ability for your hero in a certain way. After your crest you will fill your remaining 5 item slots with regular passive items. These will not have active effects like crest do so don't worry about pressing buttons to use them, but instead they just provide passive effects and stats like health, power etc to boost your power level over the course of the match. There are recommended items for each character in the store that you can pick from and most of these are pretty decent from what I've found so once you graduate from using auto build, I recommend sticking with the recommended item pool and just picking the ones you like from there for a few more games until you feel comfortable branching out into making your own builds. To help make your own builds though, here are the top stats you're looking for in each role. You can filter the store by these stats by clicking on the respective stat in the left side of the store. This will then show only items with that specific stat and you can have a read of them and see which ones you like and think will be useful in your build without searching the entire item store. Since a lot of the items are kind of designed for specific roles and characters and most likely your character is only going to use about 20 to 25, maybe 30% of the item pool and the rest of them will be completely useless for you. So first up, mid laners. The mid wants mostly magical power, ability haste, mana and mana regeneration, as well as magical penetration. Power to make their abilities hit harder, ability haste to shorten cooldowns and spam out more abilities, mana and mana regen to keep their resources up so they can use those abilities, since the mid is really nothing without their abilities they very much rely on them, and finally penetration to remove enemy armour and make sure you still deal good damage even to targets with armour. Next up the carry will want attack speed, crit chance, lifesteal, physical penetration and physical power. These are all stats that aim to enhance your basic attacks which are a core component of being a carry. Instead of the mid that wants to use their abilities to deal damage, the carry wants strong basic attacks instead. So more power to hit harder, more attack speed to hit faster, crit chance for a shot at dealing double damage with basic attacks, and lifesteal to leverage your big damage and keep yourself alive through some healing. 
As with the mid, having a decent amount of penetration as well means tanks won't just eat your hits with their armor and not care about you. Supports want health, both physical and magical armor, amounts of which can vary based on the heroes in the match. If they have more magical users, you'll want more magical armor, for example. Ability haste and heal slash shield power if your character does healing or shielding. Both types of armor as well as health are crucial to not instantly die in fights so you can stay alive and keep providing value through your abilities. Ability haste allows more frequent abilities to crowd control enemies, heal your teammates, etc. And finally, heal slash shield power is great for healers and shielders, but of course is unnecessary if your hero doesn't have those things. Solo laners will want health, both kinds of armor, physical and magical power depending on which type of hero you are, and potentially ability haste or basic attack effects like attack speed and crit. Solo laners are quite versatile and the stats you want depend on if you are more damage focused, more tank focused, using basic attacks, using abilities, etc. Unfortunately, there kind of is no one size fits all for such a versatile role, but most heroes in this role will want at least some health and armor along with some damage. And finally, junglers will want their power type of choice, penetration, and then other useful stats stats like ability haste if you are a strong ability user such as crunch or basic attack effects like attack speed and crit if you are a strong basic attack user like chimera or grux. Junglers are also somewhat flexible in terms of what sees play there but not quite as much as solo laners. So get a good feeling for your character if he's physical or magical and basic attack or ability and build from there. But that rounds it out for items and the guide as a whole. Hopefully you guys learned something about predecessor from this and feel confident jumping into some games. I wish you all the best of luck improving and dominating on the battlefield. Catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.